Welcome to Mind Fork. You've heard of Among Us. Everybody knows Among Us. It was pretty popular a few years back and it's kind of maintained its popularity for the better part of those years. But while I've seen countless videos playing it, not so much when it comes to explaining it. And I mean, why would there be any? It seems pretty straightforward. That being said, what exactly is an imposter? Well, on the developer's official website, the imposters are described as alien and parasitic shapeshifters. And while that's fine and dandy at a glance, quenching my curiosity for a moment, I ended up wondering if such a creature could actually exist, and if so, what rules would it follow? Well, let's get into it. First we'll break down what an alien parasitic shapeshifter actually is. Everyone knows what alien means, something extraterrestrial, so we don't need to worry about that. But then we get into parasites and shapeshifters. So here's the problem. The imposter can only be one of these two things. Either an organism that shares a detrimental relationship with its host, a parasite, or an organism that is able to mimic another organism, a shapeshifter. While there are examples of both independently existing, shapeshifter is a very loose term for what I'm describing, having both traits is kinda biologically impossible due to what these two things are. So the idea that the imposter is a parasitic shapeshifter isn't really possible with the knowledge we have now, unfortunately. So why don't we narrow it down and decide which of the two is more accurate? On one hand, if it's a shapeshifter, then all the imposter would need to do is take on a roughly humanoid shape. Those spacesuits make identifying each other very difficult. However, while finding a humanoid organism might be fairly simple, finding one capable of mimicking human behavior perfectly is very hard. For a similar reason we can't put on a gorilla costume and hang out in a zoo enclosure, a shapeshifter can't put on a human suit and hang out in a spaceship without us noticing. Since we're around, well, people so much, it's pretty easy to tell when somebody is acting weird. I mean, there is a chance that the imposter is just that good, that they're a super intelligent alien species capable of mimicking other species perfectly. But bear in mind that it wouldn't just be human, right? If they're able to mimic that well, then they're probably able to do this to any sufficiently intelligent creature, which would take so much energy and information that it's a, frankly, disadvantageous evolutionary trait. And so we move on to the other side, parasites. But before we talk about why it could be a parasite, we should go over where it actually came from and consequently what it could be. Before October 2023, the best and really only answer as to where imposters came from was Polis. But I was never really sold on this answer. The surface of the planet has a purple rocky terrain that is often met with heavy blizzards. Half the planet is also missing, exposing the planet's extremely hot core. Just by taking a quick look at the planet, it's impossible for life to be sustainable here. The O2 location proves this somewhat since it's quite literally an artificial environment for plant life. The O2 rooms and other maps are capable of the oxygen depleted sabotage, but not here. This implies that the O2 room on Polis serves another purpose. But then the fungal map came into play, and I finally felt good about this conclusion. Fungal is a, basically a perfect breeding ground for a fungal pathogen, since they often thrive in warm and moist environments, which provide them with favorable conditions for growth. Fungal pathogens usually invade their host by sending out tiny spores, like we saw in the fungal release trailer, and then when these spores come into contact with the host, they can grow and spread, causing an infection or disease. So, as you'll be aware, an imposter can't do any tasks, which implies that they don't have the ability or intent to do so. This could either be a physical inability, as fungal pathogens in general aren't able to control fine motor skills, or a lack of intent, as aiding the crew with their tasks would go against their end goal, which I'll get into shortly. But no matter which is the case, Refusing to one one specific task, the submit scan task and one in the med base, implies that their anatomy is different to a normal person. Now, this would be true for both a shapeshifter and fungal pathogen, as both differences would show up in a full body scan. However, imposters also have the same heart rate as a crew, as shown by vitals readings on Polis and the airship. A shapeshifting organism, as found on Earth, prioritizes visual and behavioral mimicry which means that here they wouldn't have the same heart rate. A fungal pathogen would keep a host's heart rate the same, as increasing or decreasing it would risk killing it. So what's my conclusion? The imposter is a parasite, or more specifically, 
a fungal pathogen, not a shapeshifter. But then that begs the question, what kind of pathogen is it? Well, there are several main traits a pathogen can have, and a whole bunch of sub-variations, but considering the imposter's actions, the most relevant for us are faculative parasitism and incubation periods. I'll get into what these are, so don't worry too much, but basically if we have a look at what the imposter pathogen makes the victim do, along with a little bit of implication, we can check them off as we mention them. Now, I don't want to get too far into evolutionary biology, but if I were to ask you why do you think parasites do parasite stuff, what would you say? A typical answer would be to survive and to reproduce. The goal of every organism, right? Take the cordyceps fungi, for example. A familiar parasite for you Last of Us fans. In real life, they infect an ant, take over its nervous system, make them pass away in a good spot, and then use the corpse to spread their spores, rinse and repeat. They do this to survive and to reproduce. The reason why organisms are inclined to both survive and reproduce is less because of the organism itself and more so because of the nature of evolution. The animals that didn't prioritize surviving and reproducing died pretty early on, as you can imagine, which left only those that did, and so that became the predominant trait. So to have the imposter pathogen not use its parasitism to reproduce is odd, to say the least, but not impossible, since such a thing does exist. Faculative parasitism. These guys don't rely on their host to reproduce like most other parasites. It's especially common in a lot of fungal pathogens since when the host they're living off dies, they don't jump ship, they just keep feeding off the dead cells. The reason I think the imposter pathogen uses faculative parasitism is because its goal is to kill the crewmates, not infect them. They're capable of it after all since during game development, the imposters used to be called infected. This behavior suggests that it reproduces in a different way which I'll get into shortly. Not to mention that if the mushrooms on fungal is as abundant as we see, then it truly doesn't need a host to reproduce. Next are incubation periods. Fungal infections, in general, tend to have a longer incubation period compared to viral or bacterial infections. The incubation period being the time between exposure to the pathogen and the first sign of symptoms. The reason I bring this up is that during the incubation phase, Fungal infections need time to establish themselves in the host, and so they do what they need to do. Branch out, create toxins, grow, invade tissue, and whatever else it's capable of. Something else that can happen is that if they attack the nervous system of the host, which I briefly mentioned before, they can alter its behavior. I'm going to try to pronounce this, but I guarantee I'm going to get it wrong, so reference the image on screen if you want to actually search this up. Ophiocordyceps unilateralis or the zombie ant fungus being one of the most prominent examples. I mentioned it before, but to get a little deeper into it, the fungi spreads throughout the body and takes over the ant's nervous system. It then causes various behaviors to maximize its growth. One called the death grip, where the ant clamps down onto a leaf in a good spot, then atrophy quickly sets in, with the ant no longer able to control their muscles, remaining in a fixed place until they die. Now, if a fungal infection can do that, then it's a hop, skip, and a jump away to think that it can make a host more aggressive too. It would explain why the imposter wants to kill the crew so badly, even at the cost of its own life. Perhaps it's being manipulated into thinking that way. And that's all I've got. The imposter is a faculative fungal pathogen that can survive outside of a host. But when it finds one, it latches onto its nervous system, making the host more aggressive. However, even with all this said, something I've purposefully avoided until now was the third imposter kill animation, where an imposter's body opens up to reveal a mouth only for you to get stabbed through the face. As you can imagine, a pathogen doesn't change the body that much. It can control very specific things, but it can't create a mouth in your torso. Probably the reason why Shapeshifter is part of the imposter's description. So, am I out of luck? Did I go through this entire thing and go through days of microbiology research just to give up and admit defeat at the end? Yes. No, I'm kidding. Of course not. With the addition of the fungal map came a new sabotage called Mushroom Mixer. When this is active, a puff of purple fumes will appear on the crewmates. And after the fumes disappear, everyone will have random colors, cosmetics, and their names will be hidden. Cut and dry hallucinations. So why is this relevant? It's because I think that the tongue kill animation is also a hallucination. I do realize it's a bit of a stretch, but let me paint you a bit of a picture. A crew of scientists are traveling the galaxy minding their own business when suddenly they stumble across a planet filled with water and mushrooms. Although hesitant to go down, they're immediately bombarded with the rapid growth of these mushrooms on their ship. 
the growth continues until the ship explodes, stranding them on an island on the strange planet. Stuck on this planet with no protection from its potentially hazardous alien substances, all they can do is try and haphazardly set up communication with the broken parts of the ship and bide their time until someone arrives. And while the planet seems harmless at a glance, the colourful mushrooms and abundance of fungi makes some people nervous. Now whether this happens because someone ate a fish with a pathogen inside, mishandled a bunch of samples, or cut themselves on a foreign gemstone, an airborne pathogen begins to seep inside some of the crew's bodies. It latches onto their brain and nervous system and lays dormant, incubating for days, weeks, months, until help finally arrives. By the time people realise they've been affected, it's already too late. It's begun to warp minds, change behaviours, friends once known to be quiet and reserved take on a more aggressive and violent personality. But that's not all. The spores continue to push out this noxious smoke, causing hallucinations in whoever inhales it. And with the fear of imposters running rampant through everyone's minds, all it takes is a brief attack for your mind to create a truly horrific monster. I mean, the only person that sees the third kill animation is the victim, after all. And that's it. Actually, this time. As I did research for this video, I came across a surprisingly low amount of debate when it came to this kind of thing. I didn't actively go out and search for these arguments though, since it would have tainted my answer. But right now, I'm fairly happy with the conclusion that I came to. So, if you like the video, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for being here.